Hi, my name is Krista Swisher and I am a Neurocritical Care Fellow and I will be talking about glioblastomas today, which is abbreviated as GBM. The learning objectives today are to be able to describe what a glioblastoma is and how they develop. You will also be able to identify where GBMs occur in the brain, understand the clinical presentation and why certain symptoms occur, describe the typical MRI appearance of GBMs, be able to state the differential diagnosis for a single ring enhancing lesion on MRI, understand the typical histologic findings, be able to discuss various treatment options, and lastly, understand the prognosis of GBMs. The outline includes a patient case example, then background, epidemiology and pathophysiology, pathology, clinical presentation, diagnosis, imaging, treatment, and prognosis. Presentation begins with the case presentation of a 59-year-old right-handed male. Approximately two months ago, he began developing headaches that typically were worse in the mornings and gradually improved throughout the day. He was taking Motrin intermittently without much relief, but did not seek medical attention. He had rare headaches in the past, but daily headaches were very unusual for him. In addition, there are a few episodes of the headaches waking him up at night. About six weeks ago, he described the seeing objects, uh, excuse me, difficulty seeing the words on the right side of the newspaper. He also described bumping into stationary objects and people on his right side. Again, he did not seek medical attention despite his wife's request to do so. Then he was involved in a motor vehicle collision. He was at a stoplight going straight, and there was a car to his right that was also going straight, but that car had the right of way. That car began entering the intersection, but since he did not see this car, he entered the intersection and began going straight and the cars collided. Gliomas are invasive tumors that arise from glial cells. 60% of all brain tumors are gliomas. A glioblastoma is the most aggressive and most common glioma. The World Health Organization, WHO, classifies gliomas into four grades based on prognosis. Who grade one tumors are pilocytic astrotitomas. Who grade two tumors are diffuse astrotitomas. Grade three tumors are anaplastic astrocytomas and grade 4 tumors are glioblastomas. Grade 1 is the best prognosis and grade 4 has the worst prognosis. GBMs can arise as primary tumors, which means they develop de novo, or they can be secondary, which means they arise from pre-existing low-grade glioma, such as a diffuse astrocytoma. GBMs are most often seen in the subcortical white matter. The most commonly site affected is the temporal lobes, followed by parietal, followed by frontal, and lastly, the occipital lobes. It is rare to see GBM, GBMs in the brain stem. Sometimes they can infiltrate across the corpus callosum and then are referred to as butterfly GBMs. The incidence of GBMs increases with advancing age. Due to the increasing age of the population, the incidence of these tumors has increased slightly over the past two decades. Approximately 100,000 cases are diagnosed yearly. GBMs are slightly more common in males with a male to female ratio of 1.6 to 1. They're twice in common in whites as in blacks. The median age at diagnosis is 64 years old. No underlying cause has been identified for the majority of malignant gliomas. The only established risk factor is exposure to ionizing radiation. Evidence for an association with head injury, occupational risk factors, and exposure to electromagnetic fields is inconclusive. Although there has been some concern about increased risk of gliomas in association with the use of cell phones, the largest studies have not demonstrated this. Studies are still being performed to identify the molecular pathogenesis of GBMs, but it's likely that the malignant transformation of gliomas results from sequential accumulation of genetic abnormalities and the deregulation of growth factor signaling pathways. The process is likely multifactorial, involving growth factor overexpression, the loss of cell cycle control, uh, dysregulation of apoptosis, and genetic instability. As mentioned previously, GBMs arise from glial cells. Glial cell types include astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, ependymal cells. This is a highly infiltrative tumor. The picture on the right demonstrates the histologic appearance of a typical glioblastoma on an H&E slide. These tumors have a dense cellularity as shown by the numerous blue cells throughout the slide. If we were to zoom in farther, we would appreciate multiple mitoses and nuclear polymorphisms. This slide also demonstrates the classical findings of pseudopalisade neoplastic cells which is a configuration that is relatively unique to malignant gliomas. The term palisades refers to 
nuclei that are stacked in neat rows. Since the cells are less well organized than glioblastomas, they are referred to as pseudopalisading. There is a garland-like arrangement of hypercellular tumor nuclei lined up around an area of tumor necrosis, which is shown by the pink area in the middle lower half of the slide. Since this area represents dead cells, flu, few blue nuclei are seen. The finding of pseudopalisating necrosis is a hallmark finding for glioblastomas. The last pathologic finding seen in glioblastomas is microvascular proliferation, which is not appreciated on this slide. Patients with glioblastomas may present with a variety of symptoms. Neurologic symptoms may be caused by elevated intracranial pressure, low, uh, local brain invasion, and compression of adjacent brain structures. Some of the common symptoms are headaches, lethargy, nausea, vomiting, personality changes, and memory loss. Headaches that are secondary to increased intracranial pressure tend to occur in the mornings and wake the patient from sleep. Personality changes are seen more commonly with frontal lobe tumors. Focal symptoms may develop as well. Common neurologic findings include hemiparesis, seizures, focal sensory deficits, aphasia, and visual spatial dysfunction. In the case presented earlier, the patient had a right homonymous hemianopsia, secondary to a glioblastoma in the left parietal occipital region, disrupting visual tracts. The diagnosis of glioblastomas typically is suggested by imaging, either CT or MRI. Tumors are seen much better on MRI, and this is a preferred imaging modality. The MRI appearance of glioblastomas will be discussed on the next slide. Often, a stereotactic brain biopsy is performed to confirm the diagnosis. A biopsy alone is performed when the lesion is not amenable to resection or the clinical status is poor. For example, brainstem gliomas are extremely difficult to resect due to their location. However, it is often the case that a resection is performed as a first surgical procedure without a biopsy if the clinical picture is consistent with glioblastoma. Prior to a surgical procedure, a CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis is usually performed to evaluate for the presence of a primary malignancy since metastasis is in the differential for glioblastoma. In addition, the differential diagnosis includes low-grade gliomas, meningiomas, CNS abscess, CNS lymphoma, fungal infections such as toxoplasmosis, and multiple sclerosis. Often, multiple sclerosis can be easily differentiated from glioblastomas since MS lesions are typically small and numerous. However, there is a process called team effective MS that presents as a single large enhancing lesion on imaging and can look very suspicious for a tumor. MRI typically shows a heterogeneously enhancing mass with surrounding edema. GBMs frequently have a central area of necrosis as well. The image on the left is a flare image of the patient first presented in the presentation. As you can see, the mass is well circumscribed and the white area surrounding it is peritumoral edema. This type of edema is called vasogenic edema, which is differentiated from cytotoxic edema seen in strokes. The image on the right of the screen is a contrast-enhanced T1 sequence. There is a ring of contrast enhancement on the edge of the tumor, indicating breakdown of the blood-brain barrier in this region. The center of the tumor is necrotic and therefore does not pick up the contrast. The mainstay of treatment for GBMs is surgical resection. There are, these are very infiltrative tumors and cannot be completely removed surgically. Advances such as intraoperative MRI, MRI-guided neuronavigation, and intraoperative monitoring have improved the safety and extent of resections. The treatment of glioblastomas also involves general medical care. The most common problems include seizures, peritumoral edema, venous thromboembolism, fatigue, and cognitive dysfunction. Patients with brain tumors are at high risk to develop seizures. Seizures should be treated with anti-epileptics, uh, preferably ones that do not interact with chemotherapeutic agents. Antiepileptics that induce the P450 system, such as carbamazepine and dilantin, should be avoided since they increase the metabolism of chemotherapeutic agents. The use of prophylactic antiepileptic drugs has not been shown to be helpful. For peritumor edema control, corticosteroids such as Decadron are often prescribed. Common problems seen with long-term use of corticosteroids includes Cushing syndrome and steroid myopathy. They can also be at risk for PCP infection. Other medical problems commonly seen in brain tumor patients are dementia, DVTs, depression, and fatigue. The most important adverse prognostic factors in patients with GBMs are advanced age, poor functional status, and unresectable tumors. Despite all efforts, tumor recurrence is seen in almost all patients. These are typically refractory to therapy. The graph below demonstrates the median overall survival with various treatment options. As you can see, the prognosis is universally poor. 
Glioblastomas are highly invasive brain tumors composed of glial cells. It is the most common type of primary brain tumor. The clinical presentation depends on tumor location and rate of growth. Glioblastomas often present with headaches, confusion, nausea, emesis, vocal neurologic signs, and maybe seizures. On imaging, MRI reveals a single ring-enhancing lesion with edema and mass effect. The histological appearance includes the presence of mitosis, necrosis, microvascular proliferation, and pseudopalisading of neoplastic cells. The treatment for GBMs includes corticosteroids, antiepileptic medications if seizures occur, resection, and or biopsy, focal radiation, and chemotherapy. The median one-year survival with maximum treatment is about 15 months. And these are the references. And I would like to thank Dr. Katie Peters, who is one of our attendings in neuro-oncology, for helping with this presentation. Thank you.